gentlemen welcome back to exotic astrology and finally it's that time of the year again when the eclipse is around the corner and 2nd july this year 2019 we are going to have the solar eclipse in the nakshatra of ardra where sun and moon will be conjunct in gemini in ardra and rahu will be in its close proximity so whenever sun and moon are together or seven houses apart and rahu ketu is nearer to them nearer by certain degrees like some say 10 degrees or 12 degrees or 15 degrees almost then they say that it is an eclipse all right so today we will discuss on this eclipse for every zodiac sign depending on your ascendant the rising sign or the lagna the first house and in the beginning i will give an introduction to this transit so what you should not do is directly go to your ascendant all right first you should listen to this introduction of this eclipse otherwise you will not be able to understand what it's going what the results will be for you all right so once you know this then you can go to your ascendant okay and the date as i already said it's july 2nd depending on where you stay and yes if you want some help regarding this transit from me depending on your personal horoscope depending on what dasha you are running depending on the planets that are placed in the sign of gemini then you can always do so by going down to my website you will find the link to my website in the description section of this below below all right and yes as i always say after many days i have started making videos so i will again say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him all right so now let's discuss in short what are eclipses well eclipses are times when rahu and ketu impact us very prominently why because eclipse eclipses are those days or those seasons i would say when Rahu and Ketu or Rahu or Ketu I would say either of the one they can because they are very close to the sun and moon and sun represents the soul the conception of being in this world that's what sun is and moon represents the conception of how do you feel about being in this world so sun as I always say he's the king which means sun shows to what extent will you have a kingdom in this world to what extent will you have the possession possession of things in this world people resources land car husband wife all these things are seen by the sun because sun is the significator of light so how much light is there in you that's what the sun is and moon will tell you well suppose you have a big kingdom or you have a small kingdom how do you feel about the kingdom Yes, that is why moon is always very, very important. And according to the scriptures, like the Brihat Parashara Hula Shastra, moon is even much, much more important than the sun. Why this is? Because suppose you have a small kingdom, but you feel very good about it, then you will be very happy. But suppose you have a very big kingdom, which is a big sun, but your moon is not well placed or moon is afflicted or moon is in debility or moon is in a difficult state in a difficult house then it could happen that although you have so many things in life but you are still complaining you are not happy have you seen people having so much yet not happy and still complaining yes so there you go now this does not mean that the sun is less important but what happens during an eclipse is rahu and ketu have the power to affect our conception of being in this world which is the sun and our feeling how do we feel about being in this world all right that's the moon so rahu and ketu are very powerful and now this eclipse is happening in ardra nakshatra so what is the nakshatra of ardra ardra is the nakshatra which, which is itself ruled by rahu and by the way rahu will not be in ardra rahu will be in punar basu nakshatra okay inside gemini so now what's happening is ardra nakshatra is also ruled by rahu so you could say that this eclipse rahu will be able to play his role more prominently than the eclipses which have 
been taking place in the last three years because after Swati again this nakshatra is ruled by Rahu okay and then after four five years again you know after some time you will again see you know that Rahu will again be very prominent because then the eclipse will be in Aquarius where Shatabhisha nakshatra is okay which is ruled by Rahu again after some years so now what's Ardra basically Ardra nakshatra they say it is related to Lord Shiva it is related to they say Ardra is uh, related to teardrops <laughs> now teardrops what does this mean teardrops necessarily does not mean that it is something bad teardrops at a lower level can mean that when something is taken away from you 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 feel like crying that's the smashan the eighth house that's what Ardra is but at a higher level when you realize that you have nothing to lose actually because nothing is yours <laughs> why because Lord Krishna says in the Gita Bhoktaram Yagya Tapasam Sarva Lokamaheshwaram Suridam Sarva Bhutanam Gyatva Mam Shantim Ruchati that one who understands that I am the enjoyer, controller and proprietor of everything that exists that person is happy so that's the peace formula all right and Lord Krishna also says in the Gita, Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma Naso Chati Na Kang Shati Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Madhvaktim Lavate Param. Now this means that one who is situated in transcendence does not hanker or does not lament. So in essence what I am trying to say is this eclipse will give you an opportunity to come to this platform. How it will give you? Well. It will give you certain tests it will give you certain allurements it will give you certain things in life which maybe you would have expected or maybe you would have not expected all right but what happens at the end is you will get a chance to realize that to what extent am I connected spiritually to the universe to what extent am I in tune with the universe to what extent is my consciousness going towards the ultimate goal of life am i just hovering around in this material plane just running after things like uh, money or the opposite sex or you know wine meat name fame popularity not that these things are bad but these things cannot be the goal of our life we can earn money we can uh, have a family there's no problem with that but our ultimate goal of life is to elevate our consciousness spiritually all right so ardra nakshatra will give us a chance this eclipse in ardra will give you a chance to see how much are you free from the mentality of controllership how do you behave when you get things which you always wanted how do you behave when you lose things that you always wanted yes or things which you always had when that is taken away from you how do you behave so that's something very interesting which this eclipse is going to show us all right and as i said uh, there are many uh, places in youtube where there's a lot of fear mongering going on for this eclipse that this eclipse is bad or you know terrible things are going to happen which they say with every eclipse surprisingly <laughs> so ultimately you have to remember what happens in your life will be dependent on the dashas that you are running okay so if you want uh the overview of what actually is going to happen in this transit for you you need to check which dashas you are running okay which planets they are which houses they are ruling and where they are placed and which nakshatra they are placed in okay they will give you the ultimate result all right so now let us go to the ascendance so let us start with aries ascendance number one of the kal purush kundli all right so now for Aries, this eclipse is going to happen in your third house. Yes, third house is the house of short distance travel. Third house is the house of courage. Third house is the house of new initiatives in life. Third house is the house where you meet a lot of acquaintances. Third house is also the house where you start writing. You start communicating those things which you always wanted to do. So now what happens is you will get a chance depending on your dasha of course to 
express yourself in a way that you feel I should communicate my feelings. I should communicate the things that I always wanted to do. So it is ascendance. If you have any plan of writing a book or publishing something, third house also has things related to publishing, of course, you can do it. If you plan to travel to any place, you can do that. If you plan to open a startup, you can do that. Now, why do I say startup? Because startup means what? You need to put a lot of efforts, a lot of energy. You need to do it yourself. You need to do things which nobody has ever done. And you also need to have the persistence to get things done, even if you know they are very difficult. All right. So for Aries Ascendance, it's a time to do new things, to dive into areas where you probably had never gone. All right. And remember, this transit is very important because Rahu is very, very, very powerful in the third house. So do not misuse the next one year. So please utilize this coming year because Rahu will be there for you know another 12 months, 14 months, 15 months in Gemini. So please utilize this sign properly this time. It will yield great results for you depending on your dasha of course. Great results doesn't mean externally you become a millionaire. It doesn't necessarily mean that. It That will depend on your dasha, how much resources you have. But now is the time you will be able to make big decisions in life. Okay which requires a lot of courage because always remember Mars is the Karaka for the third house. So wherever third house comes in, Mars comes in. All right. So if you could do some worship related to Lord Narsimha Dev, who is one of the avatars of Lord Vishnu, it's great. You can chant this mantra. Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya. This mantra will help you. Okay. 108 times every day morning if you chant, it is great for you. Okay. For the next one year till Rahu is in Gemini. All right, so now let's go to Taurus Ascendance. So for Taurus Ascendance, this eclipse is happening in your second house. So now what's the second house? So now Rahu transits in your second house. Second house is the house of your wealth, family, accumulated knowledge, accumulated wealth, savings. Income is the 10th house and the 11th house. Savings is the second house. So now is the time that if you have plans for some specific sorts of investments do it but be careful Rahu will give you certain allurements to go into things like shares and gambling all right now you may think that oh this stuff is related to the fifth house well the activity of gambling itself and the activity of shares and speculative business is alone fifth house but your ultimate savings is in the second house do not forget that forget that okay so Rahu can give you allurements. Rahu can, uh, depending on your chart and the dasha, uh, make you behave in ways regarding money, which you might think later, why did I behave like this? All right. So it could happen that some family member uh, from your family needs some money and they might ask money from you. These things could happen. Or if you have a well-established business and your dasha is supporting that, then it could happen that you are trying to expand your source of income now. All right. Uh, source of income doesn't mean you are making some big business change or big business decision. It doesn't necessarily mean that, but you are uh, now you will be very much focused if you have your own business towards expanding the uh, financial sector. So which could mean that you uh, start investing new things in your business that could happen. But it's not a very big managerial change for that the 10th house is required. Okay, so it's like saying you have something which is existing already, but you try to see within that boundary how you can fit new things in a way that your savings increase. And second house is also food. So it can happen that you get tempted to go into things like wine or speaking things which you regret later. Okay. So second house, the Karaka is Jupiter. So for you guys, if you would want me to give any mantra, then you should chant the mantra for Vaman Dev. So for the for Vaman Dev, the mantra is Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Vamanaya. This is the mantra. Okay. 
So this mantra 108 times every day morning if you can chant, it's great for you. Alright, so next let's go to Gemini Ascendance. So for Gemini, this is happening in your Ascendant itself, the first house, the Lagna, the rising sign. So now what this can bring is, this can bring many things depending on your Dasha. This can bring new things in life. This can bring things related to your health. It can bring diseases or it can bring cure also. It could happen that uh, there are certain things which were lurking inside regarding your health and now it can happen that those things come out. Okay. Or it could happen that you are fighting against a disease for many, many, many years, but now you are able to get the cure for that disease. That can happen. So it will depend on uh, where the flow of the horoscope is because you cannot give a prediction for the ascendant because ascendant is like the king. So wherever the chart is flowing, the king flows. Okay. But essentially you can say there are new beginnings which are happening in your life and these beginnings will make you more, uh, I would say unorthodox. These beginnings will give you a chance to look at life in a way that you have not looked before ever okay and these things because rahu is also the karaka for foreign substances so it could happen that foreign things are coming in your life okay foreign people are coming to your life it could happen that your existing life is still the same but you have to do newer and newer so you have to get new strategies to get things done so this does not necessarily mean that your life uh, goes around 360 degrees. It doesn't necessarily mean that. But it definitely means that now is the time that you will be looking towards life with a different vision. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's good or bad. It just means that you try to work on things which you tried before. So there's a tip for you guys. If you feel that from long time, there is something in your life which you have been working but it is not working in your favor it's not giving you the results that you want then i would say now is the time you should change that okay so if you are planning to go for some specific uh, food nutrients okay some diet or anything like that or any health structure or anything to do with your reputation because lagna is also the reputation what people think of you or Lagna is also the appearance. So regarding these things, if you have tried to improve but the, but you failed due to some reason, now is the time that you can introspect why you failed and now is the time that you need to take the necessary steps to go ahead all right, with a new approach to life. So take this as a breath of fresh air and you will always feel that now life is taking a different course. Now life is demanding a different version from you. That's what Gemini Ascendance will feel. Okay. So utilize this time for the next one year because this eclipse will again happen after 18 years only. Okay. So my good wishes to the Gemini Ascendance and as a remedy, if you want to chant a mantra every day, 108 times in the morning, well, uh, you could chant the mantra for Jupiter because Jupiter because Rahu is in the Lagna and Jupiter gets Digbali there. So you can also chant this mantra Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Vamanaya just like the Taurus Ascendance. Okay. And in the evening you can chant Om Namah Shivai one mala after sunset. Okay. Or if you are in Europe because in Europe the sunset is very late or somewhere in the US then uh, you could chant Om Namah Shivaya after 6 p.m. Okay. So this is what is recommended. And if you are already doing some other mantras, then continue doing that. Okay. So now let's go to Cancer Ascendance. So for Cancer Ascendance, this eclipse is happening in your 12th house. So now Rahu transits your 12th house. That means the kind of travels that you will take in life for the next one year will be will not be the way you expected which means that now you may travel to foreign lands now foreign does not mean that a person in the US travels 
to India or a person in India travels to the US. Foreign could also mean that places which may be in the same city, in the same town, in the same village, in the same country, but you feel as if that is like a foreign place, it's like a foreign country, which means you could feel that 12th house, which is also the house of the psychological mind, what's going on in the background. You could always feel that there are certain things in life which you now need to get rid of. Okay, because 12th house can show the baggages also in life. So now is the time that if you're battling with some difficulty or especially addictions like uh, having wine or eating meat or indulging in watching adult material in the internet, now is the time that you will get a new chance a new opportunity to look to god because 12th house is the house of moksha as you all know and get rid of these bad habits okay because the ascendant cannot function unless the 12th house is good because 12th house is the house of loss they say so whichever things or whichever people in your life that they are not contributing positively to your life now is the time that you need to get rid of those people those people who are contributing for your downfall who are degrading your energy who are depleting you your resources now is the time that you need to distance yourself from them okay from living beings and from non-living objects okay maybe you are watching too much tv so you need to get rid of the tv so now is the time the next one year that you need to clear off stuff because now is the time you will get chance to do that all right so please do it and because saturn is the karaka for the 12th house i could suggest if you could chant this mantra om namo narayanaya every day for 108 times in the morning or in the evening or in the afternoon or in the night preferably in the morning it will be very very good for you okay it will be extraordinary for you in fact so do this mantra it will help you now let's come to the leo ascendance now for simha lagna leo ascendance this transit is happening in your 11th house so they say that this is the best transit of rahu in the 11th house because rahu loves to be that's his favorite house why because that's the house of desire and rahu is the karaka for desire rahu is the reason why we are born so now is the time depending on your dasha it will be decided uh, you, will your desires be fulfilled or to what extent they will be fulfilled okay but one thing you will see you will start communicating with so many people so many new people will be there so many people who you would have never met and surprisingly after rahu moves to your 10th house which will happen after you know around 15 months you will see that you will never see these people again so just take a note of the people who you meet in this next 15 months they are the ones who will be there till this time and maybe later they don't exist <laughs> all right so you will also make a lot of superficial connections now there's one question which i would like to give the leo ascendance that when you are meeting so many people and you're making new connections do not let the demon of pride come inside you that oh i know so many people because always remember rahu is cloud the moment it disappears the cloud is gone so suppose you have your friends your family members you know your husband your wife all the good people in your life who have been supporting you since long 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 time but now suppose you become egoistic you become arrogant and you say that ah i don't need any of you you know i have these friends you know look at that girl look at that boy you know they are there for me no please do not do that okay so you will have a lot of stuff to rejoice depending on your dasha of course but that does not mean that you throw away the people that are already existing in your life all right please do not do that 
and if you use this properly you can make connections lots and lots and lots of connections you can sign contracts deals negotiations you can do collaborations if you are in youtube it's a great time do collaborations be together enjoy have fun it's a great time and also 11th house is the house of network circles and groups associations as i say so now is the time you can do unconventional things within your group circles okay so if you are the leader of a company and now if you are trying to change certain things in the company now is the time you can do that all right now is the time you will get a lot of support from the community okay so now let's talk about virgo ascendance so for virgo ascendance this transit is happening in your 10th house 10th house is this house where sun gets dig belly directional strength so this just like for the leos in the 11th house this 10th house transit for the virgos is also the most powerful transit okay so when rahu transits the 10th house this directly has to do with your name fame status power position and authority and this is phenomenal for your career growth so anything you are planning to do in your career if you are planning to get a promotion now is the time you talk to your boss before 2nd july i don't know if you have if you will see this before that <laughs> but no problem the results will be there till the next 6 months okay so the thumb rule is for virgos whatever you want to do in your career front just do it the next 6 months just do it don't think you will be successful or not if you do not succeed what will happen at at max you will fail but that doesn't mean that you will lose something okay so if you are planning to go out of your 9 to 5 job and open your own startup now is the time if you are planning to get an uh, admission into a big university now is the time if you are planning to uh, do some mergers if you are a big businessman and you want to do some merger now is the time and now is the time that you tell the world the results of your activities now this does not mean that you keep boasting in facebook about your achievements but you have to behave in the workplace in a way that you communicate properly the things that you have done okay so that's what virgos have in store so for virgos it's a very good time it's a fantastic time wonderful in fact all right so do not uh, waste this opportunity utilize this to the fullest okay and you will definitely benefit from this all right so now let's talk of libra ascendance so for libra ascendance this transit is happening in your ninth house so ninth house is the house of gurus is the house of god is the house of spirituality it's the house of your father is the house of anything which takes you beyond this material world all right because that's the house of enlightenment it's the house of empowerment it's the house of motivation is the house of the guides so now if you have been feeling from some time that you do not have a direction in life you need a particular direction you need somebody to tell you where to go in life that could be anybody that could be a doctor who gives you some health check up or a consultation that could be an astrologer that could be your guru your shiksha guru your diksha guru anybody or that could be your phd guide or your masters guide or your professor or that teacher or that person who gives you tuitions or the online tutors okay so now is the time that you should approach them and you should gain great knowledge from them okay so if you are in a university and if you have some issues with your professor then one thing that you could do is you could try uh, something like e learning you know like websites like udemy.com or coursera.com like when i did my masters then these two sites have helped me very much because rahu represents technology so when technology comes to the ninth house what could happen it could happen that you know you get gurus through technology which means they are not directly in front of you but they are still there somewhere <laughs> sitting and guiding you okay and you could also meet lot of spiritual people you could meet uh, existing people from your spiritual community after a long time this could happen 
okay you could also take long distance travels that could also happen and if you want to become a guide or a guru yourself of course we cannot become a guru but if you want to become a life coach or anybody who helps others then you could do that okay so that will benefit you immensely now and this is not to uh, tell somebody that oh i am a great guru or somebody no don't, don't go on boasting that oh look look i did this i did it. this simply means that we genuinely want to help other people it's just that and nothing related to boasting okay so even if uh, you do not have any position in society you could still always go and help people all right so whatever knowledge you have you can always share it with others okay so that's the best part about rahu's transit in the ninth house all right so now let's talk about scorpio ascendance so for scorpio ascendance this eclipse is going to happen in your eighth house now what is the eighth house eighth house is the house which shows you the things that you need to work on in this life eighth house represents those things which don't let you move ahead in life all right because eighth house represents addictions your weaknesses any problem related to sexuality is seen from the eighth house so now this means that if you have some issues for addictions or anything to deal with pornography or prostitution or anything to do with adultery now is the time that you can work on those weaknesses all right if you have a group of friends who force you or apparently they pull you <laughs> towards things like drinking or smoking then now is the time that you need to tell them that hey enough is enough <laughs> of course what you do or what you don't uh, that will be decided by the dasha of course but uh, this is a way by which you can try to get rid of the things which which are preventing you from becoming your best version in life all right so eighth house can also represent occult it can represent astrology it can represent things which take you into depth all right so if you are doing some research if you are doing your phd etc then this is a very good time for you depending on your dasha of course that uh for you guys if you are into some masters or phd then you can actually do some serious concrete research now which you have been postponing from many many days months or years maybe so the eighth house transit eighth house in a sense if you ask me then it's it represents those things which you must cross over for spiritual enlightenment all right and because saturn is the karaka for the eighth house so if you chant this mantra om namo narayana ay this will be very beneficial for you 108 times every day morning okay it will do wonders for you all right and yes you need to have discipline in life you cannot just do things whenever you want anywhere <laughs> so have a disciplined life have a schedule get up on time do your spiritual practices in the morning then go to the office do your work or to your business and then do not spend too much time in the night okay so when rahu transits the 8th house best is to sleep very early not to waste time you know unnecessarily in things like social media or youtube or watching some fancy stuff in the internet all right so sleep early that's the mantra okay <laughs> all right so now let us go to the sagittarius ascendants so for sagittarius this transit is in your 7th house so now what's the 7th house 7th house represents your spouse 7th house represents all the people that you meet in this world with whom you have intimate connections because they are the ones which aspect the ascendant any planet in the 7th house will always aspect the ascendant now what does this mean it means that 7th house represents those people who can impact your life very strongly 
all right that's what is the meaning of the seventh house and our spouse or husband or wife they can impact us very strongly because they stay with us most of the time so that is why they are the personification of the seventh house so now when rahu transits your seventh house and this eclipse is there it could happen that uh, now you and your spouse if you are married already then there could be a new dimension to your relationship now is the time that you will work on issues which are pending from a long time now is the time that if you are not married you could uh, end up finding somebody you could marry somebody from a different caste creed and religion that could happen or there could be some age gap age difference if you are planning to get married now will you get married or not that will be dependent on the dasha all right so if your dasha planets are signifying the second seventh and eleventh house these three houses primarily very strongly also through the nakshatra then if you are single and if you want to get married and if you are of a marriageable age so maybe if you are in india around 25 to 30 and if you are searching maybe this is the time you get married okay and if you are already married as i always said before that a new dimension could come into your existing relationship now some astrologers will tell you that oh rahu is entering the seventh house this uh, transit will give you extra marital affair or some astrologers will say it will break your marriage no it will not do that it will only do that if your dasha is permitting okay and of course the whole chart matters so do not just uh, start getting fear unnecessarily that oh i will have a divorce or my marriage will break or something of that sort no it's not like that okay so there you go now is the time that you need to show loyalty to your partner to your husband to your wife and the important thing here is uh, not to expect things from them in return okay because rahu has a tendency to expect too much sometimes so now is the time that you may be uh, forced to be detached detached not in a wrong sense that the person leaves you or something like that but it could happen that you realize this fact that ultimately it is your responsibility to make you happy okay happiness is an inside job nobody else can make you happy it is only you so now is the time that you start working on yourself okay and also you need to give time to others to your spouse and to your near and dear ones by which they do not feel left out okay so maintain that balance all right so now let's talk of capricorn so for capricorn ascendance this transit will be happening in the sixth house and for capricorn this is a very phenomenal transit why do i say this only for capricorn because your jupiter is in the 11th house all right so jupiter in the 11th and rahu in the second fantastic fantastic this is for your career your money finances your job your work prospects hard work discipline all these things are there so for the next six months or next one year your mantra should be very clear i will just have a disciplined life and i will focus on my health and i will work it could happen that you might have to turn down a few invitations of party all right because now is the time that you will have to work seriously because sixth house deals with the daily work which we do so sixth house is very important for you and six and eleven both are houses of money okay so phenomenal time this is for you utilize this time properly be very disciplined in your workplace have a good relationship with your colleagues and uh, because saturn and mars are both the karakas for the sixth house so every morning before you go to job you can chant these two mantras om namo bhagavate narasimhaya you can also chant om namo narayanaya for saturn okay they will immensely help you and you should have a good healthy lifestyle which means you should stop uh, eating unnecessary things which uh, make which make you an unhappy person all right which will give you diseases like wine or meat especially so if you are heavily into eating meat then 
it could happen that uh, now you could encounter some health issues so please reduce your consumption of meat and it's best if you can give it up altogether all right and this i am not saying because i am a vegetarian because it's a matter of common sense that we should not be killing animals and sixth house is the house of health so if we enjoy by giving somebody pain then we will not enjoy that pleasure for very long that pain will be transferred to us by our karma and it will manifest in different areas of our life all right so stay away from things which do not make you a better person okay so now let's talk of aquarius so for aquarius lagna aquarius rising this transit is happening in your fifth house and fifth house is the house of mantra it's the house of love it's the house of intimacy it's the house of children so now it will depend on what your dasha is indicating so for example if your dasha is indicating you will have some love affair then you could have some love affair if your dasha is indicating you could have children then you could end up having children if your dasha is indicating you will go into speculation speculative business then you could go uh, and end up in speculative business okay if your dasha is indicating that you will get initiated by a guru you will get diksha mantra then that could also happen and newer and newer ways of having enjoyment having fun relaxing basically because fifth house is the 12 from the sixth so it's like the end of job end of job doesn't means you are fired it means when you come home and you are just relaxing it's like you are not working it's like no work now okay so now is the time that you could have a trip with your uh, family you know, to with some to some location you know to some distant place if your dasha is indicating that okay and accordingly uh, you need to see that how you can make yourself into a better person because fifth house is actually the house it's the reason why you get up in the morning so now is the time that you should check how much motivated you are in life for what are you motivated in life the good things the bad things all right so the things which motivate you positively stay tuned with those things and the things which deviate you from being your best version stay away from those things all right that is what is my conclusion for the aquarius rising and now the last but not the least the pisces rising pisces lagna people so for you this transit is happening in your fourth house and fourth house as we all know it's the house of our happiness it's the sukhasthan is the house of peace and content and just relaxing <laughs> so now depending on your dasha it will be indicating uh, it will give you results so for example if you are in a university or a school and you are studying then it could happen that now you have to study more intensely because fourth house is also the school remember it okay do not forget then if you are uh, having the shas of planets like venus especially and if venus is connected to the fourth house then it could happen you end up purchasing a vehicle because venus is the garaga for vehicles if the dasha is of mars and saturn or mars or saturn then it could happen if the fourth house is indicated in your dasha it could happen that now you end up purchasing a property okay and if the dasha planets are like you know for example moon or venus to some extent not venus directly that would be for vehicles but especially for moon then it could happen that uh, you do some new stuff inside your home inside your existing house okay that could happen or things related to your mother they could also be prominent and it could happen that now you want more time to spend with the family which is perfectly fine so now for the next one and a half years you could spend time in your home more spend time with your closed ones rather than you know just going out and having some fancy stuff outside <laughs> so this is the time where you can thicken your existing uh, connections with your family members and with your relatives and friends that is very important because fourth house represents your inner circle closed ones all right so whatever the dasha is telling that will happen okay 
and this transit will be the trigger for those events to happen all right so and yes for pisces the mantra will be om namo bhagavate vasudevaya because moon lord krishna is the kalaka for the fourth house all right moon is the kalaka for the fourth house venus also but primarily it is the moon okay so that is all from my side thank you very much for your time and attention and i hope this helps you and yes if you want a consultation from me regarding this transit and you want to know how this transit will affect you then you could always go down to my description section where you will find the link to my website okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him bye bye